Hello everyone, Gomez here for the Land Up channel again with some more card reveals. Tonight it looks like we're going to be getting like 17 new cards, so I just can't wait to see what the hell we're going to get because obviously like it's exciting times, so it's like just, oh, just, this set is shaping up to be amazing. So let's see what they have in store for us this evening. Just those last few seconds, what are we going to get? Boom! Mm, here we go, we got some cards! Oh, I, I'm... They look, oh my god, it's like DD &D dice load. Oh, that looks so, as it's from Bill Troy, and obviously we don't know. Okay, but we get so it looks like we've got some. We've got cards from everywhere. Cards, cards from everywhere, and not a drop to drink. So let's quickly go. We're starting with Targon with uh, Destiny's Call. Grant an ally in hand. Uh, so, number one, burst speed. Number two, it is kind of like, um, what's his face? The, um, why can't I think of the damn, what's his name? The eight cost one that's in Freljord that gives eight four. But obviously that is to a unit that's already in play. This is a unit in your hand. So it's not like a buff like that in terms of the fact that it's been, but obviously you could then bring out a very powerful unit from playing Destiny's Core. And obviously like, you know, we know that there's other things that you can play in, um, which it Targon that you like you could potentially work with. So actually really good. Like, you know, it's a, it's a nice burst speed, obviously really high cost and it's, you're not going to be de like developing too much, but that is just like knowing that you're going to have something big hitting the board. And we have a lot of the big things that we're seeing, like the big eight eights with overwhelm that are going to be coming from Freljord and like, just like it, the big potential things you could be seeing with these ascended champions. That's a nice little buff that kind of catches things up to that point. So I do like that. We've got another target. We've got another peak for Targon. Forget Targon's peak. We've got star tipped peak, uh, which is a, a countdown. So I was seeing like, I'm assuming we're going to see like countdown things like going for like land Marks going for different regions like uh, across the expansion like as it goes so create two random celestial cards that cost three or less so just yet again just like working with that creation okay working with those celestials so the ability of making a kind of like tar mono targon deck working the allegiance card into this to make those things cost even less like there's this and, and making it so that in the late game those celestials which are the more celestials you've played like it's it's another card that can kind of play into that but bearing in mind it is a loss of tempo is going to be the thing that i will say about it but it, it's, it's nice that you've seen another card kind of like working with celestials to work with targon it's nice to see another letter so um lost riches this we're getting into our build draw cards lovely which it treasures which is so Draw a treasure uh, that blah, 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 blah. Draw if there ain't any draw. Blah, 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 blah. draw like, do, I do apologize. My mind is not being able to work things out. Draw a treasure. If there aren't any to draw, create two treasures in your deck. I'm assuming these are going to be the treasures which we already get from um, the shipwreck holder. And so just imagine, I mean, the treasure trove. Treasure trove is such a, a stupid treasure as it is, but the ability of not even needing that unit anymore, because obviously that unit drops on, um, was it eight or seven? Seven has been ship recorded jobs. So that ability of putting treasures before that fact, and considering the fact that treasures are, it, it, it works with the deep mechanic. It's, it's actually really good deep support because it's something you can put in earlier than the shipwreck holder. And as you're tossing cards, any treasures that you would be tossing are actually just going to be going directly into your hand because treasures can't be tossed. So, actually, really good mechanic with deep. Because let's face it, deep has got a little underappreciated. So, it just gives them another resource, which means just those treasures are so powerful in deep that that just helps it get those things out earlier. And meaning that as you're tossing cards, it's not bad. So, actually, I love the fact they put this card in and if you've played shit recorder this is just instantly getting you one of those treasures but in all honesty the better way to play this is just to put the uh treasures in your deck rather than drawing them because if they get tossed they go into your hand anyway so why why would you like you'd rather just spend that four man to put them in your deck but obviously if you need them because there's some quite devastating ones with the deal free which it do five damage to everything get free which it free of the um Eight eights if you're deep, but it'd be which it um which it would be fearsome. Um it'd be which it'd be three five fives if you're not deep and treasure trove and treasure trove is just such a good secret. I that I'm actually quite hyped about which get lost treasure or lost riches. That's actually a really good card. Loaded dice. I immediately like my mind drew to these dice because I love DD. So let's see what we got for the rest of the round. When you would you uh, when you damage the enemy nexus now. <gasps> 
<laughs> what the armor? I mean, right, right. For the rest of the round, when you damage the enemy nexus, nab one. Now, think about this. Think about this. The ability of if you manage to get some, um, what's it, black market merchants on the board. Every if you play this card, every single one of your warning shots is nabbing. Every single one, if you're playing Powder Pandemonium, every single one of your monkeys dying is nabbing you something. This card is actually gonna be really funny. Uh, this, this is the card, because let's face it, we have not had nab support in ages, because admittedly when it first came out, everyone hated nab as a mechanic. So we've not seen any support for it. The fact that, uh, yeah, God, let's put some nab, bit, let's put some nab in there. But also, let's make it ridiculous <laughs> in terms of the fact that uh, if you play the Allegiance minion, getting more warning shots, you could already run free. Just so the potential ability of having six warning shots set plus, plus parlay all of those cards and then just wait until that turn till you play this and just go boom 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 on the enemy there rip tide rex if he hits the enemy there I mean, but no but obviously like having the mana to play this and play rip tide rex is more unlikely but what i mean is just literally playing this card with so many things that you can get in there is just gonna be really funny and honestly I love this. I, I love this card. I love this design um, in terms of just that, working with that. Yes, amazing. Cannot wait to play Lodice. There's going to be so many meme decks that come out of that. Uh, Shwidget, Shadow Apprentice. We're going on to Ionia now. So it looks like we've got one from every region. Let's keep going. I love this set. Uh, Shadow Apprentice, Elusive, which it one cost Elusive, um, which it, when I'm summoned, grant me plus one, plus one, if an ephemeral or if, you know, if an ally has ephemeral so this is um the whole thing of like working or uh, ionia with shadow Wolves, because admitted like zed and hecarim have kind of had like a, a relationship going on for a little while like it's never been powerful which has never been enough resources that have kind of combined them together because there's not been enough things that are going to stay alive on the board to warrant running that deck like you know 100 i know that you can use things like um death mark and that to obviously make ephemeral things not ephemeral anymore but obviously it just it needs more synergy and so the idea of shadow apprentice and it going like a okay when i'm summoned grant me plus one uh watch it one one if an ally has ephemeral so it just it means that you can kind of work with that as well as the fact obviously it works with zed in terms of the fact that he makes an ephemeral but he only makes an ephemeral when attacking so you're not really going to get value off that but working shadow Isles and them together there is a potential of doing so because obviously like um dark water scourge then like uh, getting this out then using death mark to keep that which is uh, dark water scourge alive is it it, 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 it it means that there's more synergy between those two regions that like it uh, just means there's more support uh the other ionian card field magician or the music i was gonna say magicians there's musicians they're attuned it is a four cost one four uh each round once you've summoned three other allies refill your spell mana and draw one so for examples here so it just basically means once you've summoned three so yet again this is kind of synergy that could work with um the shadow Isles kind of deck that i was describing because it says like summoning allies if you were to play hecarim onto the board he immediately is going to be summoning two uh if you've played uh any form of shark chariot before then then that's just more so so it's just that and then it can refill your mana and draw your cards. So it's just draw support for that kind of deck. Because if you're running an ephemeral deck, that's always its problem is that it runs out of pace on the board. And you're just getting smashed in while not being do things. So there's drawing and the fact that it refills the spell mana. So if you're running that deck and you're running um, Black Spear, which is a four widget free mana, deal four damage. It's just something which just means that, boom, you immediately have the mana to do that. And of course, you could just use um, Haunted Relic, which would summon free, and then it would refill your spell mana. So then their Femoral attacking forward, helping Hecarim get his buff, but then also drawing your card and then refilling the spell mana. So once those Ephemerals die, boom, you can Black Spear something. So actually, it's it's come some nice cards that can work there. There is other um, ways that you could use this, obviously in terms of the fact that it's just all about just summoning things so um 
there's definitely going to be... My, my mind is not thinking right now what else you could do with this, but that's the immediate thought that comes into mind because it looks like they've just thrown in more synergy for that kind of deck. But there is definitely other things that you can do in terms of summoning things um, to the field of play. Uh, but Shadow Wolves is like one of the, the main things that comes to mind in, in my opinion. I mean, technically, I guess you could use this with PNZ and use it with like the, the Jerry bots and, and things like you know, cause then that refills the mana. Like, and like, the, the, there's certain synergy within there. Oh, like, high bots because obviously higher bots cost zero but then you can refill the mana so you could basically play some spells play those bots that then summons draws and then puts the mana back up again so you can then play some more spells potentially so a little bit of synergy either way there but you know gomez gomez loves uh, pnc heimer and loves shadow Isle, so that's immediately where my brain goes but there's gonna be other synergies that can be done there speaking of pnc um Production Surge, which it zero cost, slow, which it slow speed spell, um, which it to play, spend all of your mana. So we're seeing this in the exact same way that um, Thermal Beam works, in that it, it will be zero, but then as you get mana, it will obviously keep going up, um, which is uh, to play, spend all your mana, summon random turrets, which it turrets those, uh, which it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Which, who, whose total cost equals the mana spent. So basically, all of them. So it's a gamble. It's a gamble because it is summon random turrets whose total cost goes to the mana. So you can basically, you might just get one turret because you could just get like up, up to eight. You could just get one turret, which is just the full cost, or you can get a bunch of little turrets. I love the fact that most likely this is going to have the same synergy with, um, what's its face? Why can't I think of the damn name of it right now? The, um,. Suppressor, the suppressor from Damasia, who makes spells cost one more. Obviously, if you don't know this already, if you use that with Thermal Beam, I, I, I believe it makes the damage go up so you can still play it and it makes damage. So technically, this means that you could play it with a suppressor and this would summon more things to the field. Like, like one more than where it would, like, like one mana more normally than where it would. So actually, potentially funny synergy there but um i do actually really like this card it's something which is it works very nice in a heimer kind of esque deck because also bear in mind this will be helping towards heimer's level because i believe that heimer's level is so is it summoned or played i'm gonna have to have a look up what heimer's thing is because i can't honestly remember whether or not it's the bots that he's some seen summoned or played because obviously this would be good heimer synergy in terms of fact get him on the board play this he immediately gets a bunch of uh, which good um, things on the board, and then you get to play a turret off of um, the man that was played off of this as well. So potential synergy there to very quickly level Heimer, but I can't remember how time is, uh, Heimer's thing works. Anyway, let's get on to the next PNZ card. So timeline, concurrent timelines uh, for the rest of the game. So this is actually for the rest of the game. The first time you play a follower each round pick one of three followers with uh, the same cost to transform into i mean <laughs> now this is gonna be a really funny I, I can't wait to play this card like this is gonna be a card i'm definitely gonna play for banter but so it's the idea that the first time you play a follower each round um you get to basically out of free it'll be giving you free cards within that pick so and you can basically just transform them into anything so you'd be looking for certain ones where there's good cards like you know maybe in the five mana slot i know there's some good cards that you'd be looking for cards which are in really good places and um transforming them the thing of it is is it just says um it does say when you play a follower transform it into it so i don't think that summon effects are gonna be in play i'm not i, I can't obviously confirm or deny that at the moment but it doesn't say summon it says transform it into it and as we know from hex it from hex tech um transmogrifier a transformed thing or even um wait this one does, does um the shady character when he transformed into something it doesn't count as a summon does it i don't believe it does I might be wrong and this might end up actually working with summon effects, but I'm not, I can't confirm or deny right now because my mind can't remember how that works with summon effects, but it is a really funny thing and the idea of just for the rest of the game, whenever you first play a follow, it's like, aha, immediately I get to choose something else. So for the abilities that could potentially be used here, if you were to run this with Targon and you're playing Priestess, you get Priestess's effects for free, but she is only a one-two. So play her effects to get the invoke and then immediately transform it into 
into a better free cost that's got better stats it's it gives you different options like that you'll be looking for cards whereby in their initial thing you get something good but their stat line's not the best like going for things that so so I don't know, like, I, I can see specific synergy that would potentially work with this, and I definitely are going to have a lot of fun. Those PNZ cards, well done! Well, to the developers! Honest, the whole set is been but these cards, well, honestly, well done. We go on to Noxus now. Crimson Blood Letter. Um, which get the next time you summon another ally, deal one damage to it, and grant me plus one. So, that is... Um, so the next time you summon another ally so is that a continuous effect or is that just after because it just says the next time you summon another ally because what i'm trying to say here is is this a continuous effect in terms of the fact that you can have this on the board and then every single time you're playing somebody they're immediately getting one damage and then all that one damage is stacking like the one granting this one 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 and stacking into it so obviously there's certain synergies that can work with that especially within the crimson family like uh, the one which basically is gonna be doing one damage to the nexus the one who whenever you do damage to them gives you another member of the crimson family like there's certain synergies that could actually because let's face it vladimir Vladimir has just lacked like a certain there's, there's a little piece of the puzzle that's missing with a good Vladimir Crimson deck and the ability to have something which literally every single time you're playing something it is dealing damage to it so it's helping Vladimir but also you're getting the benefits off of them but this minion is also gaining stats I don't know whether or not because it just says the next time you summon another ally so I don't know whether or not it's the one directly after this or whether it's a concurrent continuous effect thing by looks of it it looks like it's just a one-off which would be a shame because i would actually like a unit on the board like that where it would literally be boom you play this and then every single time you're playing something it's doing one damage but this is getting stats and also you're getting the benefits especially in a vladimir deck of dealing that one damage uh plus as well that would work kind of well in a healing deck because that would be a continuously knowing that the second you're playing something it's taking damage and then boom you've got soraka or the land which at the landmark healing it back up again but i don't think that's how that works i'm not going to say that how that is how that works it says just the next time it doesn't say it's a continuous effect but i would love to see a card like that as well that's my that's that'd be what i'd want to see but i believe this is just the next card that you play it only does it once but still a nice idea and it's something to help that vladimir package i guess um the next note, which it um, knocks in cards, strength in numbers. Oh, oh my God! The axemen come up. Uh, how they, how they not? My eyes were not drawn immediately to the axes. People know that Gomez loves a uh, Legionnaire Marauder deck. For this, it is an eight mana slow speed, but for the benefits that you can get, especially if you've played a bunch of. Um, which is uh, Legion Emeralders. For anyone who doesn't know, Legion Emeralder is that card which every single time it attacks forward, it grants um, Legion Emeralders anywhere uh, plus one plus one. So the idea of that is that you could basically do an early game of attacking forward with them or making loads of copies with them. Like, for example, if you didn't know recently, I put out a video using Shadow Wild. So if you've not checked that out, it will show how powerful Legion Emeralders can be. And this is just another card which just means, boom, you immediately get two Legion Emeralders on the board, which both of them attacking together are already going to be giving each other um plus two plus two stats from um going forward so it's just something that's worthwhile uh thinking about as the as a potential like unbelievably strong thing so yes i love this so i've got i've got hyper synergy and i've got my older synergy they know me so well <laughs> right knows me so it's like it's like this expansion was built for me <laughs> <laughs> but let's go let's keep going um which is so uh, we've got shrieking spinner which is another noxian card so we're getting three cards for noxus um which could attack giants which it grants spider allies plus one so this is just another thing that kind of works with the noxus elise kind of um thing going on with spiders because obviously we've already got spiders within noxus like you know house spider and arachnoid sentry and things like that so this is just another thing which is working towards that meaning that you are um granting those spiders plus one plus as i said if you're working with that shadow i was a least deck there's a ways of getting like loads of spiders out and so it's just 
trying to overwhelm your opponent by going wide on the board. Obviously, it's only doing plus one attack and it's not giving any health stat. And as you know, a lot of spiders, um, like especially the spiderlings and whatnot that you're going to be creating mostly, are going to be one health statted. And we already know that um, Lysandra does one damage to everything and it's a lot of removal for one damage. So whether or not that's actually going to be powerful and useful, but a potentially good aggro fearsome deck with spiders, it, it might see play... Considering the fact that I've just seen we're getting another spider who doesn't look like a spider. Um, soul spin up from Widget for Shadow Isles. So we're starting to see the Shadow Isles cards right now. Uh, when I'm summoned, grant me plus one, plus one, and fearsome if an ally died this round. So that's an immediate spider going up to a 4 3 with fearsome if you've if something's died. And so it's just synergy more between the spies because obviously if you played this, it's. And also the thing to remember about this is it's got a nice uh, health stat. It's every single single time it attacks it is granting the spider allies which are around it plus one so that's another thing to note about that um which is spinner but this soul which is soul spinner actually works quite nicely within um a fearsome spider deck because because it consider that it's nicely drops on turn three so you could have um played a lease and then you can play this obviously if you've got something that can kill that has died on the round I don't know, it's it's a really nice thing just to help so it looks like they're helping that spider mechanic synergy work out a little bit more and oh i've just seen what was okay right because i did say you know what we need we need more deep synergy we've already seen deep a little bit of deep synergy coming in from Bilgewater, but like we've not really seen any other sea monsters outside of the um one that there is which is the uh, terror of the tides like, in terms, we haven't seen any sea monsters in a long time that uh, that that little tribe has not seen anything getting added to it in a long time so it's nice to see that added a shit which is a sea monster it is in shadow Isles, but we already have terror of the tides in shadow Isles, and obviously deep works really well with shadow Isles, um and that so it's good to see when an ally which it uh, which is when another ally dies or last breath tossed one so when so when another ally dies or last breath tossed one so just another quick little thing bearing in mind that this does have the deep mechanics so this will be going up by three three so once this goes deep this is a two cost um four five and it's just helping you get to deep as well considering the fact that there's the whole lot purpose of that deck is a because it is when another ally dies so i'm assuming that whenever another ally dies so it basically if you play this and then say played um why can't I figure the damn name of the card right now? Um, Blighted Caretaker. It's killing something and then giving you two ephemerals, which will then die. So technically, if I'm reading this right, when another ally dies, or feels uh, toss one. So I'm seeing that as being that literally, um, it's gonna. Like, I, I'm assuming it might be. It might not be a continuous effect, but in my mind, I'm reading that as like that would be three tosses from uh, playing a Blighted Caretaker. But I said I might be wrong. But it's just it can help you get to deep a lot quicker. That that's the idea is what I'm trying to say. Is if that works like that, I am I am maybe speculating. But that does say next card. This doesn't say anything about the next card. It just says when another ally dies. So. We'll see how that goes, but honestly, it's still nice synergy. It's nice to see another sea monster. Actually, a cheap sea monster for once, because obviously, like, you know, the next cheapest one is the four cost, I believe. So, but it's just, it's just nice to see more things being added to that tribe, because honestly, I've, I've been wanting to see things added to that tribe for a long time. Uh, we now head on to Damasia. Uh, Jag Dragon Chow. Uh, they feed this to the dragons? Is that, is that what, am, am, I, am I reading that right, or am I not reading that right? I'm reading that as Dragon Chow, as in, like, they feed it to the dragons. Um, when you play a dragon, it's strikes me and you i mean it is dragon chow you're literally just feeding the dragons so this is a card which basically its whole purpose is to die that is that is what this whole this whole card's purpose is to die it is get it is striking this which is striking me and you draw one so it's a draw card which let's face it Damasia does not have the best draw the comedy of the fact that you can actually synchronize this so you could play this play a dragon which would then kill this draw one but then you could play a redeemer which also comes from Damasia which is when somebody's when an ally's died this turn allow you to draw a unit there's a little bit of synergy potential there so it's helping the draw things but it's also helping the dragons because they are mostly like oh, like the dragons there have got fury which means that boom this is immediately giving them a plus one plus one stat line because it's not doing any damage to them so actually a really funny card that's whole it's your whole purpose is to die your whole, you you were bred 
to die. Um, what I do want to know is, so, yeah, which, no, don't worry, don't worry about, ignore what I was about to say because it's meaningless, but I do actually like the idea of this card. It's something which just helps that dragon archetype as well as giving a little bit more draw to Damasia. Uh, so let's go on to the next Damasian card, Towering Stonehorn. Uh, I don't take damage from enemy spells or skills. So this is literally a unit we've not seen i don't think we've seen this before right in terms of the fact that literally it is a unit which cannot be damaged by skills or spells i believe this should technically still mean it can still be recalled um by spells and things on those lines but it just can't take any damage from them it's a seven seven it demands respect and basically is forcing you to have to block your way through this obviously hush would be able to take down that tech which is that text which then means you would be able to kill it but i don't think that this i believe i mean i might be reading this wrong but i it says no damage it says no damage but can it be killed my question is would this die to ruination that's my question right now would this card die because it, do, it says it doesn't take damage but it doesn't say it can't be killed i want to know vengeance and uh ruination whether or not they can still affect this card because it just says i cannot take damage from enemy spells or images but does that still mean that you can be killed that's honestly the one that i want to know but obviously there's a lot of damage spells and it's just this this card does remind the uh, demand respect in terms of that it's going to be a hard thing to remove if you don't have certain utilities and you basically it's a seven seven it requires you having to block it but i want to know how the how it works with that but anyway let's move on boom astral boon from friendly to into the last these are the last two cards grant the top ally from your deck plus two plus two uh enlightened so a little bit more enlightened synergy working between uh which in friendly uh, instead grant all allies in your deck plus two plus two so it's a little bit of a do you just take this early game to get those early buffs or do you wait until you're enlightened especially if you're running a ramp deck which let's face it you might be seeing a little bit of ramp coming out especially with this like you know eight uh eight cost synergy things coming and then boom just give everyone plus two plus two very nice card in that region i'm not gonna lie uh, spoils of war grant an ally plus one plus two and then plunder grant plus two plus four instead so a little bit more plunder mechanics working in here because we already know that obviously you've got shared spoils you've got things and there's certain like things that work in that in in friendly or like you know ember maiden that to make sure you're basically trying to force in damage into the enemy nexus as well as obviously you could pair it with um what's his face old um bilge water to make sure that you're doing damage and do like a sejuani gangplank because they got the same level up but I do, I do actually like this card because it's an either or and it's just plus in the stats. It's more weighted in the health, which is like a, what uh, Freljord normally does, just to help you get through trades and whatnot. So honestly, I do actually like the sound of that. But the, all these cards, this whole thing has been amazing. Just all of them cards. So all of those cards, amazing. So many things. All the regions are getting some cards and Two Fed have done such a great job with this set. All of these cards are amazing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you're thinking down below about what you want to do with these new cards slash decks and that that you're thinking of. As well as the fact that obviously um, you can catch me. Shameless plug time if you didn't know on Twitch, Twitter and Instagram. I'm live on Twitch on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. So you want to come catch the action live, please feel free to. As well as the fact there's a Discord link down below if you want to get in there and start talking about these new cards but honestly riot should be so proud of themselves pat themselves about this is an amazing set and they've done an amazing job a little bit upset that i didn't get to see like a, a twitter um like a video today but obviously we did get to see a little bit on the on the lab things that they're doing but i would like i just like that hype from that but anyway i'm still hyped for these cards but anyway i hope that you have a great evening day or whatever time it is for you and uh until next time until the more until the next reveals bye Flash of brilliance that could save me. Save me! <laughs> that doesn't save me. Okay. Is there anything from you? Save me. That doesn't save me! Okay. <laughs> get rid of this and get rid of this. Find something that can save me.